Welcome to the second edition of the World Loppet TV magazine. The 2017-2018 seasons kicked off in the Southern Hemisphere. We will learn a bit more about the Kangaroo Hoppet, which was recently held in Australia and finished this second episode with a look back on the New Zealand Merino Muster. To begin, let's go to Ushuaia in the extreme south of Argentina for the first event of the season, the Ushuaia Lopit. This is, I think, the seventh year that I've been here for the first uh, Marcha Blanca and then for the uh, Ushuaia Lopit. So I've been to Ushuaia many times. I've also been here for a trip to Antarctica. Uh, I've been here in the summer and also in the winter, so I love uh, this area of Argentina. This is the, I think, the third, maybe fourth time I came to Ushuaia Lopet. I, I like this place and uh, the organizers made a remar remarkable work by preparing this track. Uh, when, when we see the bare fields without snow, it's a remarkable work and uh, I enjoyed the track, excellent track. Así que tomamos la decisión de intentar eh, crear un nuevo circuito con menor distancia y aprovechamos eh, el protocolo del, del reglamento que nos permitía poder eh, hacer la prueba, hacer realidad la prueba con, con un circuito más corto en el cual los corredores iban a tener que hacer muchas más vueltas, eh, pero era mucho más eh, correcto asegurar el evento que cancelar el evento. Bueno, la carrera estuvo muy buena, eh, sobre todo por el hecho de que se largaron con los chicos que corrían 25, entonces las primeras cuatro vueltas se hicieron bastante entretenidas. Eh, el deshielo de la última semana, digamos, dejó su, su trabajo hecho, pero la verdad que hay que felicitar a la organización de la carrera, porque la pista realmente estaba en muy, muy buenas condiciones, se nota que se laburó muchísimo, así que bien contentos, porque la, la verdad que... La pista también fue divertida, eh, al hacer ocho vueltas se pasaba muchas veces por, por donde estaba la gente, lo que hacía que la carrera sea un poco más entretenida, ¿no? eh, Bueno, la carrera, si bien no fue el circuito que estábamos esperando para, para hacer, eh, estuvo buena, era un circuito fácil, rápido, así que por suerte pudimos llevarla a todos en equipo, los tres con Matías y con Fede Sichero, y estuvo buena, entretenida también. No, no, pudimos llevar bien entre todos, así que estuvo, estuvo bueno. Como, como atractivo, eh, el, el, el competidor que viene a, a Ushuaia López no solo viene a, a competir, que, que es su razón principal, sino que además se encuentra con un destino eh, muy maduro en términos de, de oferta de otras cosas, ¿no? de, de la gastronomía que tiene, de los lugares, de las excursiones, de la tranquilidad que encuentra en este lugar, que, que es muchas veces un, un factor diferencial, y sobre todo también a partir de ahora de la conectividad. Charlábamos recién con, con otros eh, competidores y con gente de agencias de turismo que nos dicen que bueno, algunos se van para Buenos Aires, otros van eh, a Iguazú y a Córdoba, otros van a visitar otros destinos de, de, de la Argentina, y eso se puede hacer a partir de, de la conectividad que se ha logrado en estos años y de y de esa malla que se ha tejido, de esa red que se ha tejido para que podamos estar cada vez mejor conectados con el resto del país. Este es un trabajo de todos, del club andino, de sus voluntarios, de sus miembros, de los sponsors, de las organizaciones que hoy están presentes. Hoy estamos viviendo un día soleado, con, con la gente contenta y satisfecho de haber hecho lo mejor, de, de haber podido cumplir lo bueno que llegamos. Está el equipo acá para poder eh, mostrarle al mundo eh, nuestra geografía, nuestro lugar, nuestro esquí de fondo y que World López está presente en Argentina. Let's leave Argentina for a unique experience, skiing in Australia. This is what happened on August 26 in Falls Creek in the south of the country, more than 200 kilometers northeast from Melbourne. 
Welcome to Falls Creek in the Alpine region of southeastern Australia for the 27th annual Kangaroo Hop It, Australia's international ski marathon and the second event of the 2018 World Lop It series. Staged on the fourth Saturday in August, over 1,000 skiers from 22 countries are taking part in today's event that showcases the beautiful Alpine National Park surrounding the Falls Creek Ski Resort. An overnight low of minus 5 degrees with a forecast top of plus 5 degrees provides all competitors with a great sense of anticipation and a carnival-like atmosphere prior to the event. The main event is the 42km freestyle technique with waves of 100 skiers, starting one minute apart to avoid congestion in the early part of the course. Fast and firm tracks for the field allow the lead skiers to set a fast pace from the start in the perfect conditions. Today's field is very even with a number of skiers in prime condition and looking for the final victory of the Australian winter. A lead pack quickly forms as the head of the field make their way past some of the ski lifts that Falls Creek is well renowned for as well as premium cross-country trails from June to September. The first 10 kilometers of the course is very flat before the skiers embark on the 2 kilometer Paralyzer Hill that provides the first real opportunity for the elite skiers to assert themselves. The Australian Alps are a winter playground for many people to experience skiing, not just elite skiers. The first climb quickly establishes a lead pack of four skiers with local hopes Phil Bellingham and Callum Watson, joined by Swiss Olympian Valerio Lacardi and Miles Havlik from the USA. Numerous aid stations are enjoyed by all participants around the 42km course. The vast open plains of the Australian Alps provide a perfect backdrop for the event for all participants as the lead pack climb up to the highest point of 1,800 metres. This Australian winter has seen many metres of snow fall that has allowed the organisers to use the full 42km loop for the first time in a number of years. The lead skiers descend off the upper sections of the course and are able to take in some breaths down the flowing sections called the Blade Runner. The course preparation has been designed for safety and enjoyment with wide sweeping turns through the eucalyptus trees. Miles Havlik from the USA continues to drive the lead pack at a fast pace throughout the first 30 kilometers of the event, although the work at the front of the group is shared around on different parts of the course. As the skiers start the second, flatter loop, they continue to jockey for position as they make their way out along the shores of the lake that is the top reservoir in the local hydroelectric scheme. Spectators around the course provide lots of support for all skiers in the event. In the end, it comes down to a sprint finish with Falls Creek local Bellingham in prime position leading into the final metres. However, it is Havlik from the USA with a final desperate lunge on the line that takes the victory by less than a boot to give the spectators the closest finish in the event's 27-year history. Barbara Jezasek completed a clear victory in the women's event as she wins her first World Loppid event for her new country, Australia, as she crosses the line ahead of Mary Rose from the USA and Iris Pessy from France. Let's go to the unique landscape of New Zealand for the last event of the Southern Hemisphere of the 2017-2018 season. The sun came out for the finish of the 2017 Merino Master 42km Marathon Cross Country Ski Race at Snow Farm in the stunning Pisa Range, Wanaka. There were 85 entrants in the 42km cross country skiing with over 127 in the 21km snow rake and the 7km straggle muster. Here we are at the 23rd Reno Master, it's so exciting. It's good to dress up and make it a fun event, not be too competitive. I'm Olivia and I'm 10, but I'm in the under 12s and yeah, I'm really cold, but it's exciting. Yeah, my name is Stefan Hals, I come from Germany and uh, I'm here for the Merino Master, 42 kilometers and I hope I have a good finish and uh, yeah, I have fun. As is the tradition, many people dressing up for the occasion with the dancing girls, a kiwi to name a few and the annual early viewing of Santa Claus. 
Entrants competing came from all over the world, Italy, Australia, Wales, Germany, France, Switzerland, Finland, USA, Japan, Argentina, Singapore, Russia, Canada, Hong Kong, Morocco, Nepal, Mexico and Estonia. With the Pyeongchang 2018 Winter Olympic Games looming, this event is an important part of the more serious competitors preparation. The temperature was minus 5 degrees with fog lingering at the start which formed ice crystals on beards and hair as steamy breaths froze as they were exhaled. Simeon Hamilton, Brain Gregg of USA and Philip Bellingham from Australia all finished in first, second and third respectively, all recording times within one second of each other. The women's race was won by USA Olympian Jessica Diggins of the USA, followed by Hannah Dreisigacker, USA and Britta Clark from USA. Snow conditions were fantastic, with one veteran skier saying they were the best he has ever raced in. In the 21km snow rack, the women showed their international class. Another USA Olympic skier, Kathleen Gregg, beat her fellow USA teammate Eileen Carey, followed by Julia Kern, also from the USA ski team. Campbell Wright flew the local flag, winning the men's 21km race with Moroccan skier Samir Azimani, and Sophie Caldwell won the women's event hotly contested by her USA teammate Kathleen Gregg. Juha Viljemaja from Finland, the President International Lopit Federation, also raced in the 21km snow rink. Everything uh, was done so professionally because the start, timing, tracks, finishing and almost also the service was excellent. This is the end of the second edition of the World Loppet TV magazine. See you next time for a new episode. To finish, enjoy the most beautiful images of the Southern Hemisphere.